All right, gang, thanks to some people on the internet who suggested I make a fidget spinner. Well, this is what it's gonna be. And uh, if you watch ahead now, you'll see how it's done. Today, I received a whole set of bearings. I received 200 of these things. They are 15 by 11 by nine. So if you've never worked with a bearing before, it's 15 on the outside, it's 11 on the inside, and it's nine thick. Okay, so I got 200 of these, and the mysterious part is that I didn't order these. It's not the first time I've received the wrong thing. I once opened a box from China and there was a box cutter uh, in the bottom, free. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so now I have a whole big whack of these and I need to do something with them. And the lovely people on my Instagram feed said, make a fidget spinner. So that's what we're gonna do today. First, I'm gonna model up a really crude version of this bearing, and then I'm gonna put four of them into a fidget spinner and away we go. So let's start with a new component that will be our bearing. 15 by 11 by nine. And I'll create a sketch and I will make this on the XZ plane because that's how I roll. This line will be 15 divided by two. So this is 15 divided by two because what I'm, my plan is to make a rectangle and then rotate this around the shape. That makes sense? I hope it does. I'm doing the rough dimensions here. This will be, this will be 11 divided by two because that's the inside and this are coincident. There we go. And then the thickness is nine. That doesn't seem right. I'm looking at this box again. 15 by 11 by nine. 15, 11, nine thick. It's clearly not nine. Maybe they've mislabeled even that part. Let's measure these with the calipers because that's the, that's the real test. These are five thick. So I don't know where they got nine from. And they're five and a half on the inside and they're 15 on the outside. So they're 15 by five and a half. I believe I just said five thick. How odd. Now, uh, if you take a very close look at these bearings, there you go. This is a ZZ bearing. You can even see the number written on there. The number is 695Z because it is sealed on both sides. The Z means that it's sealed. Uh, sometimes they say ZZ because both sides are sealed. Anyways, I want to make a little a little something here so that it, it looks more bearing-y, right? So let's say this, gonna be three and a half. Okay, there's a little, little groove there. Groove is in the heart. And I'm gonna mirror that around this line. If you're looking at my commands up here and you're saying these don't look like the defaults, that's because I have modified them for the things I use the most often. You should do the same if you're using Fusion a lot. It'll save you much time and headache. Get comfortable with your shortcut keys. Oh, I'm gonna need one extra line here. That line is the axis of rotation. Now I can rotate this around this. Boom, bearing. I can even, let's put a little chamfer on here because it's, yeah, there's a little bit of rounding on those edges. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so there's my bearing because I planned ahead. It's in the center, right? I care a lot about where the center of a design is when I make my design because I think about how I'm gonna try and put that in something else later. And I imagine you will too as you get better and better at this. Now, the next question is how big do I make this fidget spinner? Mmm, 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 mmm. That's 23 millimeters. Let's try 30 millimeters. That, that's plenty big. Yeah. And then I'm gonna rotate that in a pattern that's a circle. The axis is the Z axis, which is the blue line. It's red, green, blue, like in computer colors. So then it's X, Y, Z. Always this way, or at least it should always be this way. I know when I write code and I'm putting three lines in to represent one of these spots, I use the same scheme. Okay, so that is how it would look if I put all three bearings out. But really, I only need to make one third of this design and then repeat it. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane, please. I'm going to project this outside circle and this outside circle. Okay, thank you. And then I'm going to say 
Well, uh, let's just hide these for a moment. I'll offset this. Um, I'm going to make a little line through here. That is a construction line. And then I use my favorite rectangle and I pop this in here like so. Because this is exactly the same size as the bearing. When this 3D prints, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's extrude and we can put a little fillet on here so it looks pretty nice and smooth now. Maybe we put a little chamfer on here. I like the one. Now, remember this is one third, so we gotta repeat this. Pattern this in a circular pattern. Oh, it's gonna let me do only the components first. Okay, that's fine. So around the Z axis, please, three times. And it merged, it should merge them together. It did not yet. Let's go modify, combine. Okay, and there we go. We have one fidget spinner, basically done, ready to go. So I was saying before, when you print a circle, an inside circle, because this is actually split up into triangles, and I will show you what I mean. When I try to save this as an STL, see all these little triangles? It has to, in the STL format, it does everything with flat surfaces made of triangles. When the 3D printing software comes back and looks at these triangles, it is gonna make those the flat edges, so like a flat edge between, see this line here? That is where the triangle actually is. And you'll see that it's inside the bearing. So this circle is actually gonna be tight, tight enough that we might not be able to get the bearing into the hole. So before we export this design, I am going to hide these bearings. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna use the Q command, which is adjust. And I'm gonna say minus 0.05 because on my printer, that is enough to make these a snug fit. If I did 0.1 millimeter, uh, it would be loose enough that the bearing would fall out. I didn't use a fillet around here, a rounded edge around this side because when this prints, this 45 is gonna print, you know, if I, if I turn this sideways, if I do a section analysis, this edge right here is gonna print without support. If this edge came out like this way, then it would need support. And if it was a curve, well, the top half of the curve down to about here would be without support. And then from here onward, it would be too steep. So you get just a little bit of support material here and oh, make me nuts. Save as, stick that somewhere on my computer. Now we're gonna throw that in the printer. Boom, there we go. We're gonna print this in my fast speed setup. Uh, stupid fast. There we go. All right, so we're gonna come back in seven whole minutes. Oh, who has time for that? Magic of the internet. And like that, over the magic of the internet, here's our print. Mr. Printbed, you go back where you belong. One, two, three, four. El Fijito del Spinnery. It's that easy, kids. So it's been a hoot. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll stay Dan, you stay you, and I'll see you next time.